So now in this video, we're going to build a miniature version of a backup power supply. And we're going to use the actual 500 Farad. That's their so-called rated value. They're probably lower than that, and they're probably unequal. But uh, in any case, we're going to make a circuit that's pretty safe, even for uh, unequal supercapacitors. And to begin with, we're going to start the... Uh, load is going to be a LED with protective resistor so a light load but uh, this doesn't store a ton of energy but it will keep the LED fairly lit for uh, quite a while so let's zoom in and first thing we're going to do we're going to use a 5 volt power supply the breadboard power supply there and using a rectifier diode will do two things first off it will keep the super capacitors from sending power back through the power supply when it is turned off and that's wasted energy it might not be good for the power supply I'm not sure how bad it is for it but uh, in any case we're going to forward bias this diode so it's a rectifier diode it's gonna block about 0.7 volts we'll talk about that coming up so there's a gray stripe right there I know it's a little hard to see but uh, that's the cathode it needs to go towards the negative side of the uh, power supply so it's headed that way for it to conduct so I'm gonna try to go one row above where that jumper is so we have that there so this is gonna block about 0.7 volts it's a silicone diode and so we'll have about 0.7 volts less both for charging the super capacitors and for lighting the LED and the uh, protective resistor the LED is gonna block about 1.6 volts and that voltage difference now about 4.3 volts minus about 1.6 2 volts in that range that voltage difference will be across the resistor it will set the current and we will get that resistor now so I'm going to use a 150 ohm resistor because we're not going to be dealing with much voltage so as I said before 4.3 minus about 1.6 or more and so uh, not much voltage so there we go now we'll grab the LED of course the LED is polarized long lead the anode goes towards the positive side of the circuit short lead the cathode goes to ground there we go so so that's all basic electronics right now we're gonna look at using these super capacitors as a backup power supply so first off we want to limit current because this breadboard power supply it really doesn't want you to use more than 500 milliamps of current and some of them even say that's the maximum amount of current so we're gonna take a 10 ohm resistor so that's gonna be a lot of power so I have these uh, 10 watt resistors and uh, you want to use a high wattage resistor for this and generally for super capacitors any resistors you use are going to have to be high wattage because they're intended for high amounts of current and uh, so probably a good idea to pick these up if you want to do a lot of testing with uh, super capacitors and batteries so I'm going to angle this let's zoom back we really don't need to be zoomed in anymore these are larger components but uh, there you go we have that now the uh, super capacitor so I got them in series because they're only rated for two 0.7 volts you can see that right there 2.7 volts and they claim 500 farad and so putting them in series now we can actually charge these if they're equally charged to uh, 5.4 volts so double the voltage now of course they're probably not going to be equally charged so you want to leave a safety margin that's one reason why I used the uh, rectifier diode the shot key diode will block less voltage, about 0.2 volts with the uh, large shot key diode I have. But for a safety margin, I'm happy with blocking 0.7 volts from the 5 volt power supply. So that will give us a lot of uh, voltage difference. And uh, we'll look at that in uh, another video, actually. I'm just going to do the build of this circuit, really, in this video. So now, let's... Uh, might as well do the uh, negative jumper first so everything's gonna share the same ground rail so the power supply 
puts uh, ground zero volts at the blue rail like that and those two are always connected no matter what the negative rail to the negative rail so you have a path through the power supply and now we're gonna plug in this jumper here which I crimped an alligator clip to so I can quickly connect that and I have a whole bunch of these alligator clips with wires on them and uh, I just picked green to indicate that we have a connection from this point to that point it's green so I thought of using three super capacitors earlier but I dropped it two. and when I was using three I used another colored one to uh, connect this super capacitor to another one so you would be able to identify what's connected to what by the color but in any case it's green instead of black or red so we know that's where the super two super capacitors are connected so now let's connect to the positive rail and I'll try not to block the LED as soon as we make a connection you should see the LED comes on and uh, fortunately the power oh that's why I connect this wrong spot we want to connect it to where the resistor is right there there we go so now we will connect it to the positive side of the power supply and you'll only see the uh, resistor come on there so that's one re reason why it's good to make these prototype circuits you uh, catch these mistakes and I uh, notice them without damaging anything a sensitive power supply and a larger uh, circuit might have got fried from that who knows but in any case there we go that's it for the uh, circuit there here is the schematic you can see we got one path for the power supply to power the resistor and LED that's what we first built then we added a path to charge the super capacitors we got that and right now it's not charging the super capacitors the super capacitors which already had a charge on them are actually powering so the currents going through this resistor which is only a 10 ohm resistor so it's not really limiting the current mostly this 150 ohm resistor and the voltage drop of the LED is limiting the current so they're discharging right now we will hit the uh, power supply you may have seen the LED got a little bit brighter now it's a little bit dimmer but now both the LED is being powered by the power supply and the super capacitors are being charged so before we end this let's uh, get the uh, multimeter out probably be better to put it there and first thing we'll do right now they're charging and I will check the voltage across them now you can see it's 3.3 volts so it takes about 1.7 or 1.6 volts minimum for the LED to light up for current to flow through it and uh, actually that's being provided by the power supply right now so let's turn that off and uh, right now we have 3.2 across these capacitors and uh, that's one reason why I'm using a fairly low value resistor there but uh, now they are powering them and so of the 3.2 volts about 1.2 volts is coming from this super capacitor when I started charging them they were not equal and uh, so almost 2 volts is being provided by this super capacitor so that's why it's important to use equal values and have them start at an equal charge but we have some safety margin in this circuit so I'll talk about that in another video but the main takeaway is that 3 volts is more than what either of these could be charged to and this circuit will actually charge them to 4.3 volts and uh, so even right now we couldn't use one super capacitor to provide the voltage but when they're in series they share the voltage and so you get a multiple of voltage if they're equally charged so one final word is that these super capacitors I got them on uh, eBay most likely they are pretty cheap now you might even be able to get them for three dollars probably about four dollars though if you if you shop around and they claim 500 farad they're probably much less but they're all the ones that I have were in the hundreds of farads and so maybe it's 400 maybe it's 300 so if I had to guess yeah each one of these is probably closer to uh, 300 farads than 500 but the way to test that 
you would have to put one amp of current and uh, see how many seconds it takes to go from one volt to two volts. So each voltage change of a 500 farad supercapacitor takes one amp 500 seconds. That's how you uh, know what the capacitance of a capacitor is by how long a certain amount of current takes to charge it. So 500 farad, each farad takes one second per amp. So 500 seconds at one amp will go from one volt to two volts. So that's for each volt. And uh, these things also, they don't like to be at 2.7 volts. They kind of start discharging. So that will be another safety, little safety margin we'll talk about uh, coming up. And uh, I'm going to try to balance them by keeping the voltage up higher. The one with the higher voltage will probably kind of drift down and allow the other one to uh, drift up a little bit. So in any case, that's for different videos. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.